Welcome back class. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on a full headed weave. We're going to be using today our jam wave, cantalon, unique hair extension. But instead of we going to, instead of we having it in this format, we're going to be doing it in a bob format. I've already went and prepared the hair and cut it into the shape that I want it to be. Because most times when you get these, these I'll show you all when you reach to the top, they, they, they normally face in two different directions and you want all forming in the same direction. So we're going to get started. I'm just going to cut off the excess, any little excess that is here. I use the format that I use to plait is what I would call the fishbone. You know what fishbone is shaped with each corner coming to meet each other. And then I did what you call an in invertible or an inside corner, invisible corner, commonly called, and put the hair straight down and tuck the rest in. So, I'm not going to double my thread because I don't want the hair to be too bulky. So I singled my thread and I'm going to begin at the nape area using what we call the blanket stitch. So what I'm going to do, as I hold the thread up, I'm going to take the needle and put it directly to the center. I'm not going to just stop and throw the thread over the needle. That's too much time. So we're going to, as we automatically hold the, the, the end of the, wave, the thread up, we're going to take the needle and carry it straight in. So we don't have to throw it over, saving time. And we continue to stitch. Again, let me do it a little slower for those who may not have grasped. As we so we're going to lift, put the needle in the middle and directly we're going to form our blanket stitch. Pull the thread up. When we reach to the end, we're gonna just gonna cut off and secure the end. At the end, we're just gonna make a double and then we're gonna take the needle once again, push it through our loop, pull, and then we're gonna hold both ends, one side, on either side like this and make a knot to secure the end of the the weft two knots and cut off the excess i'm going to show you a second time double our weft we're gonna start
so now that we've reached remember i told you to use your landmark as the middle let's say the middle of the brows using the same blanket stitch effect from side to side we're gonna work this crumb area now i'm gonna use a shorter piece just for the for the fan area and i'm gonna come just to the middle of the brow just to the end you could say just like halfway to the end of the brow so we're gonna start our sewing almost to join this other one that we have down to the bottom using the same blanket stitch Every time we join on an additional piece, we just reinforce it on that particular area so there won't be any separation. And when we reach to this point here, we're not going to stop here at this peak. We're going to take it across and continue with our sewing.
if you need to add on another thread all you need to do is carry the end of this thread take the end of the one that the previous one that you were using and you're just going to make a tie a knot right on the, the spot where you have started for that piece of thread decides it wants to give me a little piece of trouble there to just thread back on so it happens so and we just want to continue it's not and when you open it out you will notice that the hair is placed the hair itself places in two the opposite direction i should say i don't know if you all can see what i'm speaking about here if you look from here to this end to about let's say about here you will see that the hair is facing in the opposite direction and if you if you keep looking down as i open out the weave more you're gonna see that there is a part that faces towards me so i tend to cut the weave let's say for instance the weave stops here facing in the opposite direction i will cut here because i don't want when i place the hair on that you're gonna get what happens is that you get a kick it tends to give a kick if it's in all the hair is not facing the, in the same direction Simple things that we tend not to pay 
let's continue with a nice tape. That way you move a lot more quickly. Less, um, you tend to not to, to, to choke, choke your client constantly while sewing when it's more curved like this. Some people feel comfortable using the more straighter ones, but I'm much more comfortable with this. The semi-circle one is it is a lot more easier for me. So we continue sewing in a circular motion. And this particular week came with a closure, but I'm not going to use the closure today. I'm going to show you all how I took off my weave. Up close and personal as they were to see. as circle as small as you can make it this part is very important because remember as I said before you don't want persons to see exactly where your weave as, as has, has finished off if you don't have a closure you have to make your own closure in a way that nobody notices where you did that finish finished look does not all weave comes with closures as I said before this one comes with a closure but I I chose not to use it just to be able to show you all how you all can create your own closure all right as I said it comes with a closure but I'm just deciding not to use it as I said we're gonna do our own close we're just gonna close it off on our own here we're gonna keep coming as close as possible as I said when your thread finishes you don't need to cut off, you just slide in your needle and from this end you hold the end that was previously there as well as the end that you're now joining in here together with this part of it if you all are seeing pro properly and then you come in and you make a knot right there going close closing in that circle closely 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 you can cut off the little excess from now because there's not much more that we want here that we're going to need so you're going to cut off your excess
fold it in press the bare end just fold it in as well and we do we're gonna do what we call an invisible stitch when i say invisible we're gonna wherever it is you let's say for instance you slide in your needle here and your end of your thread comes here you're gonna slide it back exactly where it came came out and you're gonna go in back again pull it again and you're gonna slide it back right there and again you're gonna do just one more time just to secure so when we call when we do an invisible stitch it's exactly where your thread ends is where you're going to put back your needle head and you're going to come through with it so that no thread is seen on the top of the head and we can close it off there let's carry down and cut it as you can see you're not seeing anything so it's not like i'm are you seeing where the where the track has ended or anything like that all right and what we're going to do here i'm going to just what i want to do is i just want to give it a little much more side part effect here so what i'm going to do i'm just going to take my needle again and i'm going to just pull in this track a little more here same invisible stitch we're going to use because as i said we don't want it to be seen right where i stop i go back in Again, we take it again. Pull it up a little more so it's not going to show. And we're going to come back again. Push. I right, we stop. And going back in again. Little excess here on the nape area here so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna just trim it off using a little point cutting as pointy scissors and just trim it off See how nice the bounce is, the nice fall you get. I just want to take off not much from the front, but just a little. Just to complement it a little. Michelle, this is Michelle by the way, I forgot to mention, this is Michelle. 